So in our last videos, we were talking about binomial probability distributions. The last section of chapter six um, and 6.3 is going to be all about geometric random variables, geometric um, probability distributions. Like a binomial setting, very similar to it, except for one key point. There is no fixed number of trials. Okay, so in binomial, we're saying, hey, if I did this thing, you know, 12 times, what's the chance I had, you know, this many successes? In a geometric setting, right, it arises when we perform independent trials of the same chance process, but now we're recording the number of trials until we see a particular outcome, right, until we get a success. Because let's be honest, guys, there are a lot of things in life where once you have success, you probably don't want to keep going, okay? So think about um, taking your driver's test, right? If you go to pass your driver's test, if you fail it the first time, you have to take a second time, fail the second time, take the third time, you keep going until you pass it, and then you stop. You don't take it again, right? You are done. Um, whereas it might be different, you know, if you're um, doing something else, right? So different acronym, it was BINS for binomial, for geometric, it's going to be bits, B-I-T-S. So binary is still the same, is it success or failure? I is still the same, are they independent? T now represents, are we counting the number of trials until success happens? Okay, so that's different. And then success stays the same, is the probability of success the same for each trial? So T is the different one here. If we have a random variable in a geometric setting, it is called a geometric random variable. What are the possible values of a geometric random variable? They are infinite, okay? This is different than binomial. Binomial, we said we're only doing this so many times. Geometric, you could keep going and going and going until you get, you might never even get a success. It is possible, right? Um, you know, for instance, if I were to go and be like, all right, how, what, how long is it going to take me to, you know, kick a field goal? I'm not an athletic person. It might never happen. Okay, so it's infinite. So we probably wouldn't actually graph this because I don't know how to make a histogram of something that goes on forever. The distribution of a ran geometric random variable is called a geometric distribution. So let's go through and identify whether or not this is a geometric setting. Let's say we play a game where I, Mrs. Miller, choose a student and try to guess their birth month. And I'm going to keep guessing with a new randomly selected student until I'm correct. All right. So say I call on Bobby and I guess January. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm wrong. So then I call on Sally and I guess July and I'm wrong. And I keep going with new students until I get it correct. Is this considered a geometric setting? So first one, B, binary. Yes. Um, either I get it correct and that's a success or I get it incorrect and that's a failure. Independent. Yes. Barring any, you know, twins in the class. Uh, one student's birth month has no effect on another's, and my guess isn't changed by previous guesses. Trials. Yes, we are counting the number of trials up to and including the first correct guess. And the chance of success is the same for each one. That probability will be 1 12th because there are 12 months in a year. How about you go through and try and see if this one is a geometric setting. It's a similar game to the last one, but now I'm guessing the birth date as opposed to the birth month. Formulas. If Y has a geometric distribution with a probability of P success on each trial, the possible values of Y are one, two, three, and so on. So this is a little bit different. Binomial could be values zero through N. Uh, this is values one through infinity, okay? So here is the formula to find what it's going to be. Unfortunately, this formula is not on your formula sheet, but it's not a super intense formula and it's kind of intuitive and we'll do some examples to see. You can calculate this on your calculator. Just like in the last section, we have PDF and CDF. 
P is for a precise value. C is for um, getting at least one success within a specific range of numbers of trials. All right, so like that value or less than. Now, formula for mean. Again, not on the formula sheet, but the mean or the expected value of a geometric random variable is just one divided by your probability of success one divided by your probability of success. So how you would interpret it, what does it mean? Uh, it's the expected number of n trials to achieve the first success on average. Quick example, suppose you are 80% uh, free throw shooter and you're gonna shoot until you make it. So for my probability of success 0.8, the mean is one divided by 0.8, which is gonna be 1.25. This means that we expect the shooter to take 1.25 shots on average to make his first basket, okay, or make his first free throw. Now, like I said, these are not on the AP sheet. Um, standard deviation for geometric random variables is not an AP topic, but just in case you're interested, the formula is the square root of one minus P over P squared. Okay, so just realize that. In the board game Monopoly, so let's go through an example about geometric stuff. One way to get out of jail is to roll doubles. Okay, Monopoly is not my favorite game, but my family loves it. So, one way to get out of jail is to roll doubles. Suppose that a player has to stay in jail until he or she rolls doubles. The probability of rolling doubles is one-sixth. Let's go and explain why this is geometric. Define the variable, state the distribution, and then we're going to find some probabilities and talk about the average. So why is this a geometric setting? Let's go through our bits. Binary, yes. Getting success would be getting doubles. Failure would be not getting doubles. Independent, knowing the outcome of previous roles does not give additional info for future roles. Trials, yep, we're going to count the number of trials needed to get to doubles once. Right? Once you get the doubles once, you don't need to keep rolling doubles. You're out of jail. You're good. And then success. Yes, on each trial, the probability of getting success of rolling doubles is one-sixth. So let's define the random variable and state its distribution. You need to define your variable so that you're clear when you're finding probabilities. So let's use y. You can use x, q, whatever you want. But we're going to say y is equal to the number of attempts it takes to roll doubles one time. This is considered a geometric distribution because it meets all the qualifications with a probability of success of one-sixth. That's the only thing you need to define here. Back in binomial, we had to define the number of trials in addition to the probability of success. But since this is geometric, we don't know how many trials we have to do until we see success. So let's calculate a probability. Find the probability that it takes exactly three rolls to get out of jail. So what's the probability that y equals three? Well, the first roll, you didn't get it, so that's 5 sixths. Second roll, you didn't get it, so that's 5 sixths. So 5 sixths squared times the 1 sixth chance you actually get it, and it's 0.116. This is what I mean about the formula being intuitive. Even though it's not on the formula sheet, it's very basic to calculate it because it's very simple. It makes a lot of sense. Let's find the probability that it takes more than three rolls to get out of jail. Now, there's a little bit of a problem here. There are an infinite number of ways that this could happen. It could take four rolls, or five, or six, or seven, or 1,200. It's infinite on the right tail. So we're going to use the complement rule to figure this out. You are allowed to do that. So if we want to know the probability that your y, your random variable, is greater than 3, let's figure out the probability that y is less than or equal to 3. And then we subtract that from 1. So you'd have to figure out the probabilities for 3 and 2 and 1 and subtract them all from 1. So 1 minus this guy minus this guy minus, oh, if it's just 1, then I have a 1 6 chance. So you figure out all of that, you subtract it, you're good to go, and you get this. Again, you can also use your calculator, and that will be fine. Now, on average, how many rolls should it take to escape in Monopoly? So they're asking for the mean here. So we divide 1 by the probability of success, which is 1 over 1 sixth, 
So it should take about six rolls on average until you roll doubles and can escape from jail. Now that we've done binomial and geometric, let's go through and talk about how they compare. So binomial setting, each observation falls into one or two categories. Same thing is true for geometric. Uh, for binomial and geometric, the probability of success is the same for each observation. Third one, observations are all independent. Here's the difference. For binomial, there's a fixed number of observations, that's our n. For geometric, the variable of interest is the number of trials required to obtain the first success. So these are our differences. So let's take a moment, I want you to pause this video and think to yourself of these events that are listed here, these ex um, examples, which ones would be binomial or which ones would be geometric. So press pause and just kind of think to yourself which ones would be which. All right, here are the results for that. Last but not least, if you have a um, free response question, a short answer, a frappy, whatever you want to call it, and it's binomial or geometric, here's what you have to include. You have to say which distribution it is. Is it geometric or is it binomial? You have to define your parameters. So define your variable, whether it's x or y, whatever you want to call it. Binomial, you have to define n. Both of them, you have to define p, your probability of success. You should give a probability statement. So whether you're trying to find exactly something, at least, no more than, using symbols. <coughs> you want to show your calculation and the p-value. That's just a fancy name for saying the probability. You can use calculator notation, but you need to label it. Okay. And then finally, you want to interpret your solution in the context of the problem. Okay? All right, thus concludes Chapter 6 and the final video uh, for new content for first semester of AP Statistics. Great job so far, guys, and we will talk more about this in class tomorrow.